It's very popular these days. Yes, yoga and badminton. I used to play, you know. Really? Yes, and I was quite good, though I'm probably a bit rusty now. It's been years. <laughs> okay. Do you think the classes should be split into groups? Yes, that's a good idea. I know that if there were classes only for pensioners, I'd definitely be more likely to play. I'm not as fast as I once was, you know. <laughs> okay, I'll just write that down. Great. Now, we're nearly done. I just need to ask you some questions about education. What kind of classes do you think the centre should offer that it doesn't already? Well, I suppose the kind of thing that's no longer offered at the local college. Um, things like arts and crafts. Those kinds of classes have now closed as they weren't financially viable, apparently. Yes, I heard about that. It was such a shame. Those kinds of classes are so important for the psychological well-being of those most vulnerable in a community. Okay, I've written that down. Now I need to ask you whether you would be willing to pay for any of the services we were just talking about. Um, as long as it wasn't too much, I have nothing against contributing. Something like two pounds per class seems like a reasonable rate for an old man like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and lastly then, I just need to know how regularly you think you will use the new facilities if the community centre makes the changes you have suggested. Well, I'd say three times a week, which is more than I go at the moment. I only bother on Mondays and Wednesdays, as there's nothing else on during the week that interests me. But I would definitely get out of the house more if they were to make those kinds of changes. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 2. You will hear an audio tour for Hampstead in the City of London. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen and answer questions 11 to 15. Hi and welcome to the Walking Audio Tour Service, which offers guided audio tours of over 30 walks around London. The full list of the walks is available on our website. You have chosen the Hampstead Heath Tour Part 1, which was, in fact, the first of the walking tours that were recorded. Your walk takes you through part of the Heath, a huge, wild, open parkland where Londoners and visitors to the city can come and enjoy some leisurely and refreshing exercise. The Heath is one of the gems of North London. When you enter the parkland, you will feel as if you are walking in the wild countryside, but you are actually still in an urban area. The walking tour begins here at the exit to Hampstead Underground Station, which is the deepest station on the London Underground system. We hope that you enjoy your experience, whether you are on your own or sharing your walk with a companion. So, let's begin your tour. We hope you enjoy it. If you turn right as you exit Hampstead Station and stay on the right-hand side of the road, the main thoroughfare, Heath Street, will take you up the hill to the Heath itself. You are now walking away from the main shops and cafes in Hampstead Village.
but you can return to visit these after your walking tour for some window shopping. The village is busy during the daytime and the evenings. Now back to Heath Street. As the road winds northwards up Heath Street, you will pass some shops and restaurants on your way to the Heath. When you reach the top, the first part of the Heath that you will see on your right is the Vale of the Heath, which has some spectacular houses built on the Heath itself beside a large pond. If you go along a little further, you will come to a fork in the road, where one road, North End Way, turns to the left and goes northwest away from the Heath. And on your right is Spaniards Road, which turns northeast, cutting through the parkland. Walk along this latter road a little way and look for the first opening on your right, where a path leads you down into the wild parkland. As you descend along the pathway, you will find that the noise of the busy road that is just on your left disappears completely. You might want to take off your headphones to enjoy the delight of the sounds of the parkland. Don't imagine that there is only silence. There is the noise of the trees and the wildlife that lives there. As you walk along the path, you will come across several paths coming from the right. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. You can either walk through the woods and enjoy being among the trees, or you can savour the other charms the heath has to offer. You are now at Kenwood House, which is a museum open to the public. It has been used as the setting for several well-known films and is used as a venue for a wide range of functions. For some light refreshments, there is the cafe at Kenwood House. Below Kenwood House itself, you can see the grassy slopes, which are an ideal place for picnics and for children to run around and play games. Just beyond this picnic area is an open-air stage where music concerts are held in the summer months. You might even see the stage being prepared for a concert while you are there. You might want to explore this part of the heath at your leisure. But before you leave the heath altogether, there are two other notable features that are worth visiting. On the east side of the heath are several large ponds for segregated and mixed bathing. And if you would like a view of London, you can visit Parliament Hill, which gives you a good panorama of London that is in fact protected by law. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So, you guys, I'm actually um, doing a mock Section test, three. so let's continue. You will hear a tutor talking to a student about a case study. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. I'm tired. Let me take you to the other side. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi, am I bothering you? Is it okay to see you now? Hey Jack, no bother, please come in. As your tutor this year, it's my responsibility to oversee your assignments. Now, where are my notes? Oh yes, here they are. Okay, 
I see that we were going to look at your case study on the challenges of urban planning in the 21st century and how to make it as green as possible. How's it all going? Actually, I'm pretty happy with it. Can I talk you through it to make sure I'm on the right track? Of course, please do. I'll stop you if I have any questions. Okay. Well, I started by giving an overview of what green urban planning has been up until now. Firstly, there's the idea of a green belt. This is the one that everyone's heard of. But I found that while it was successful for a short time and in limited cases, it grossly oversimplified things. Well, that's a good and practical start. Um, what else did you look at? I hope that you also considered the idea of decentralization. Yes, that was really interesting, as although there were no objections to it, and it looked good on paper, it just didn't work in practice. Yes, a conundrum indeed. However, I think you'll find that there are many fads that come and go in this area. It isn't the first, and it won't be the last to simply disappear off the face of the planet. Well, this is all very good so far. What did you look at next? I then researched the 1960s fad of building new towns on new sites, but I found that although there are isolated cases of success, they tended to cost too much time and money to build. Keeping to that theme, have you considered the idea of brownfield sites? That is, sites that previously Brown, had another brownfield. use being converted into Brown. residential areas. Like the idea of buildings that were once banks being turned into restaurants, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's right. No, I haven't thought of that. Well, I'd say it's a pretty important option in most urban areas today. Even though there have been issues with safety, if the land were contaminated in any way, at least it tends to attract no objections from local residents. Okay, thanks. I'll make sure I put that in. Anything else? Well, I'm not sure about this last one, but I thought the idea of pedestrianizing central areas was an interesting concept. Do you think it's valid here? Well, it's certainly not a bad idea. The only thing is that it would probably intensify the problem of congestion in inner city areas and would disrupt local residents' sleep if the construction work were to happen during the night. The use of loud excavators to repave the area would be inevitable. Yes, I take your point. Mm -hmm. But in some older cities, I think it's one of the few viable options. Well, as long as you state that, then it can definitely be included. I don't understand this one at all. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Okay. 26 to 30. Okay. Uh, take like time there, there are like so many questions over here which area is jack having the most problem with okay so it's basically that if you can understand the language english so that's the test um yeah i'll be posting a lot of videos today about this maybe we'll see because um now I listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Okay, so that's my introduction to urban planning sorted. But now I come to the main part, which is the case study. It was really difficult to choose, as there are so many good examples. But in the end, I settled on Curitiba, which is the capital of the South Brazilian state of Paraná. Ah, yes, nice choice. How's the research coming along? Well, to be honest, I'm finding the amount of material a bit too much. There is such a diverse range of statistics that it makes it almost impossible to be selective. Well, tell me a bit more about what you discovered, okay. and then we'll see if we can come up with a plan to tackle the problem. Well, it's fascinating. Local authorities managed to achieve so much since the 1960s, principally because, rather than waiting for central government initiatives, they chose a cohesive strategy where residents were consulted. Then they took their ideas and implemented them into local government planning to come up with a plan everybody was happy with. Uh -huh. A bottom-up approach. Do go on. Well, the transport system is a real example of the town's eco-friendly image. Even though they have one of the highest number of cars per person in the country, they also have the highest number of people using public transport. 
This is because poor and elderly residents are able to benefit from a social fair that allows them to use the system for less. This has led to low levels of pollution, which also encourages citizens to use bicycles more. Well, that's really impressive, Jack. Well done. But I do have some suggestions to help you with finalizing your case study. Please. If you're going to prove Gorichiba's success, you need to refer to specifics. You mentioned pedestrian only areas in your introduction. How about that? Yes, okay. I don't know what And what about the areas in your. You need to refer to specifics. You mentioned pedestrian only areas in your introduction. How about that? Yes, okay. And what about the amount of parking for all of those cars? I didn't come across that in my research, but I can look it up. Yeah, I think it's important. And what about considering where people live in relation to their place of work? If they live in the suburbs, how about mentioning how far they need to travel in order to get to work? And don't forget about their recycling strategy, including how easy it is and how much they recycle, making sure you include statistics to back it up. Okay, got it. All in all, Jack, you've really done your homework, and I very much look forward to receiving your final draft. Thanks, Professor. You've been a great help. What has been central to... That is the end of Section success. 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. I didn't hear about it. Leibet. Talking at Leibet. Next questions are from 31 to 40, and then this will end this. Oh my God, why is it ending so quick? I don't know. So let's begin, okay? Quickly read 31 to 40 questions. Oh, and then it'll be um, it'll end. 31 to 40 questions. We have total 40 questions. Section 4. And I have to answer them. You will hear part of a talk to economic students about how to make the most of their course. How to make the First, most of their course. You have some time to look at questions 31 to, to 40. 40. We'll receive information about the economics and the dash to consider on what's difficult you guys during like just economic course guidelines and the we will try to pass it I'm so tired you guys I just want to eat something else I'm just bored I just want to go to shop and buy a cup of coffee. After I'm done with this video, I'll just go buy something on Amazon. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Stanley University School of Economics. I will be one of your lecturers on the course, and my name is Professor Whitefield. Before the academic year really gets underway, I would like to take you through some of what you can expect and to give you some general course information. Firstly, you will be attending lectures during which you will receive information about economics and the priorities that you will need to focus on. The lectures will provide you with information about the subject in a relatively condensed format. In addition, they should also provide a suitable framework for further study. Typically, this is also the first time that students get the chance to meet a researcher at the forefront of the discipline. Traditionally, lectures are seen as an essential part of the learning culture for higher education, in which undergraduate study is viewed as an induction into academic discipline and a way of viewing the world. You will receive information about economics and the priorities that you will need to focus on. That you'll need to focus the lectures on. will provide you with information about the subject in a relatively condensed format. In addition, they should also provide a suitable framework for, for further study. study. Well, Typically, this is also the first time that students get the chance to meet a researcher at the forefront of the discipline. Traditionally, lectures are seen as an essential part of the learning culture for higher education in which undergraduate study is viewed as an induction into academic discipline 
and a way of viewing the world. However, although all I have said until now is true, every year undergraduate students experience problems with the techniques used in lectures. Being forewarned will hopefully help you with adjusting to these issues. The first problem is that there is little opportunity for the development of student understanding. That is, if you misunderstand something, there is no immediate opportunity to ask. Secondly, when newer teaching approaches are used, such as problem solving, learning outcomes are improved. However, these will be learning outcomes are improved. However, these will still not replace the validity of listening and learning from an expert. You will receive information about economics. Being forewarned will hopefully help you with adjusting to these issues. The first problem is that there is little opportunity for the development of student understanding. That is, if you misunderstand something, there is no immediate opportunity to ask. Secondly, when newer teaching approaches are used, such as problem solving, learning outcomes are improved. However, these will still not replace the validity of listening and learning from an expert. Now, before you start despairing, there are several things that you can do in order to make the learning process and consequently your student life at the university easier. First and foremost, be prepared. You will be given a reading list. Don't just throw it away or forget about it. Make sure you leave enough time to go through all items on it. Once you've done that, an ideal thing to do would be to test yourself on the contents. Prepare a, a mini quiz while reading and go back to it before the lecture and just check you know the answers. Now, for most of you, this won't be the first time that you're studying economics. But you may have taken a gap year or had a, a period of time working. If this is so, and even if it isn't in fact, it always makes sense to go back and refresh your memory on those relevant theories you learned about before, as we'll definitely be referring to them. Okay, there are just a, a couple more ideas I'd like to suggest before I'll take any questions you may have. We are lucky enough to be living in a digital age. So use resources like the web to do some extra background research. There's no shortage of information nowadays, but just be sure that you're using reliable resources. Finally, and this is an important one, make sure you discuss ideas with your peers. They're in the same boat as you are after all, and you'll probably find that it helps make your learning more memorable. All in all, take charge of your learning and you'll find that you succeed. Now, do you have any questions before we go on? To the it's done, finished, I'm gonna submit. Okay. Let's see if I pass. I don't think so, but let's see. <laughs> Results are here. I've received 26 marks out of 40, 6.5, I need to get 7 at least. Why the hell is everything wrong? For the education, Spanish classes. Oh my god, section last, everything is... Every single fucking thing has gone wrong. Extra research, I was about to write background research, but then I wrote extra research. My stupid mind. Mini quiz, a gap here. Learning outcomes, problem solving, students understanding, understanding. Fuck you. Higher education, higher education. 
<laughs> oh, silly mistakes. Oh, let me go ahead and read it again. Wait, what, what have I done? Spanish classes, phase 51. I think we'll expect to send Friday at the fourth education college. Who's to where? Okay, where it is used, not what, where. Father education college, but since. Why haven't I? Why is it only. Oh my goodness, I am so dumb. Next thing which go on wrong is 15 and 16. Why listen to the noise in the park? Locate. Um, as you descend along the parkway, you will find that the noise of the busy road that is just on your left disappears completely. You might want to take off your headphones to enjoy the delight of the sound of the parkland. Oh, I get it. Okay. Then. Uh, it was 15th, 16th, even 16th, I gone. 16th, uh, is the answer for 16th? Light refreshment, there's a cafe, in ca cafe. What was the answer? G. G was the answer. Have snacks. <coughs> okay, cafes refer to have snacks. All right, see, got to use so much brain, not just English. The next school is 25th and 27th and 20. Mother, 25th, everything has gone wrong. It's 25th. I'm just checking, you know, correcting my answers, so. Gotta wait, you guys. Uh, what do you think? 20? Which one? I don't know if you wrong. Oh, uh, I did not. 25th answer is D. Oh, God, how this. This route. This is a block where it's asleep. I think it's not good. Only thing is rubber instance where they put them or something else in the order. Kind of a little difficult. It's 27th. Let me see. 27th is uh, working together with residents. Really? I don't know. Cohesive strategy where residents were consultant. Consulted. Okay, working with this. Okay, it was kind of really tough. This is really tough, you guys. It's not that easy. From 9 and 30, everything has gone wrong. Oh my, it's completely wrong. Oh, wow. There's only one was correct. D. Why not C? Mount of Parkland. Okay. Mm -mm. If you're going to Cuba to the Z, you will need to refer to the specific you mentioned the rest. So let's still have you analyze Parkland. Where the fuck the Parkland was? Where did I? Where Parkland? Oh, I don't know. I didn't know what it was in here. You mentioned pedestrian only areas in your introduction. How about that? Yes? Okay. And what about the amount of parking for all of those cars? I didn't come across that in my research, but I can look it up. Yeah, I think it's important. And what about considering where people live in relation to their place of work? If they live in the suburbs, how about mentioning how far they need to travel in order to get to work? And don't forget about their recycling strategy. 
including how easy it is and how much they recycle. Ah. Making sure you include statistics to back it up. Okay, got it. All in all, Jack, you've really done your homework. And I very much look forward to... Oh, wait, you guys. I've collected everything. I've checked. I'm going to check a little more at the end. Oh, wait, one. <sighs> okay. Priorities. Okay. Did 31 go correct? 31 resources, 32, 31, 32 was correct. 33, we've got a little higher education. I am dumb head. 34, a student understanding. Dumb again. Next, learning outcomes. I don't know, problem solving. New techniques help improve problem solving, learning techniques. I don't know. Um, such as problem solving, learning outcomes are improved. Okay, should have paid more attention. Um, next is to leave the time to re don't just throw it away, forget about it. Make sure you leave enough time to go through all times on it. To read, leave enough time to go through all items on it. Okay, all items. The next is uh, 37 gap year. If you have had a dash, revise what you previously learned. Okay. Now, for the most of you, this won't be the first time that you're stu studying economics, but you may have taken a gap year or had a period of time working. If this is so, then even if it isn't, in fact, it always makes sense to go back and refresh your memory. Okay. Use the web to do more extra research. That's what I have written. Background research. Extra background research. Extra background research. All right. 39th reliable resources. Check the sources of information on the web are there are sources of information nowadays, but just be sure that you're using reliable resources. Okay, reliable. I can't even pronounce the word. Re, re, reliable. Reliable. It means the information is, you know, correct, and you can, you know, trust the information. That that's what it means. <laughs> and I am so dumb that I couldn't even write this. Reliable resources. I can't even say that. Finally, at the end of the uh, discuss ideas with your peers. Peers, classmates, the same thing. But discuss with your classmates. I discuss ideas with your classmates. What are you discussing about? So that's gone wrong. I should have gained easily seven, you know, marks, seven points out of nine. But then I only got six point five, so I'm failed. This is not nothing. This is nothing like your fail or your pass. But it's just like. I can't get a job with 6.5 so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and uh, take it again the other one so this practice test too so they are like one two three four five hold on a second okay so did I okay one two three four five the ten more tests to do ten or eleven so yeah I'll be doing all of them today yep today so because I've got nothing else to do so I'll be doing that and I hope you enjoy this boring vlog video I just wanted to like you know study at the same time make a video so it's like why not combine both of them so yeah you can see my face and I can see my like test to my knowledge about the language English which is extremely poor so I'm gonna improve that so yeah and I love making videos so I was like why not make a video since I'm not going out today with my boyfriend I have nothing to do so I'm gonna study and tomorrow if God allows we are gonna go out maybe I'm not sure I don't think so there's 90% chances that I'm not gonna go there's 10% chance that I might no, not even 10 percent i think it's five percent chances that we, we're gonna go out if we're gonna go out it's gonna be so so nice i'm gonna make a lot of videos so yeah so that's about it i hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you very soon in the next one bye I'll, I'll be back after i having my lunch and then i'll just start again till then i'm gonna watch some horror videos on youtube yeah bye love you all